On September 18, the Central Bank of America or the Federal Reserve lowered the widely anticipated interest rate by 0.5%. It's considered as one of, if not the biggest financial decision this year so far. And in this video, we'll dive a little deeper into why the Fed lowered the rate, how it can affect us, and what it means for the global economy. The first reason why the Fed lowered the rate was to follow the dual mandate. Guided by our dual mandate to both sides of our dual mandate. The Federal Reserve has two main goals it tries to achieve and maintain, which are price stability, which includes keeping the inflation rate target at 2%, and maximum sustainable employment, which is to have businesses hire as many people as possible within their capability, and the two goals together are known as the dual mandate. If we look at the first goal, the 2% inflation rate target, we can see from this chart that the inflation rate has come down from the high of 9.1% in June 2022 to the current 2.5% in the US. It was also during this period that the Fed continued to increase the interest rate at the high speed from the low of 0.5% to the high of 5.5%. A total raise of 5% and interest rate to lower the inflation rate by 6.6%. According to the Fed, the high interest rate it had set was able to bring down the inflation rate, which is approaching the first goal, so it's now focusing on the second goal, the unemployment. The Fed wants to cut interest rate to encourage business hiring and prevent people from being out of jobs further. The high interest rate tends to discourage business hiring as it becomes more expensive for companies to get funding to expand their businesses. The interest rate the Fed is deciding on is known as the federal funds rate. The banks will be charged when they borrow money from each other overnight. Yes, banks can also borrow and lend money to each other, and they tend to have the lowest rates, so they will charge their customers like businesses or individuals like you and me with a higher rate to earn the difference or the spread. But when the Fed started to increase interest rate in early 2022, banks started to charge higher interest rate and the unemployment rate in the US increased from 3.5% to the current 4.3%. The Fed lowered the interest rate by 0.5%, hoping to encourage more investment and business hiring to lower the unemployment rate. When the Fed lowered the rate, banks could not charge their customers with their rates. So when we want to get the loan for our purchases or investment, theoretically it should be cheaper compared to like a few weeks ago when the rates were still high. A second reason for the Fed to lower the rate was that they simply want the rate to be back to where it was. Due to a global supply shortage during COVID, the inflation rate reached a historical high of 9.1%. The Fed had to increase the interest rate to lower the inflation rate down. Right now, the inflation rate in the US is approaching the 2% inflation rate target, and the Fed claim it's appropriate now to start lowering the interest rate to match the lower inflation rate. Also, the Fed claim they waited longer than other countries. They wanted to make sure that the inflation rate is coming down to the 2% inflation rate target before starting to lowering the rates. Based on economic theories, a higher interest rate could lead to a decrease in prices of the products we buy, and many central banks raise their interest rate as well. This year, as the world is slowly coming out of COVID, many central banks around the world decided it's reasonable to start lowering the rates. Central bank like the European Central Bank lowered its rates in both June and September 2024, and the Bank of England lowered its rates in August 2024. So how can the lowering of the rates affect us? If the current target rate, which was set at a range of 4.75% to 5%, can bring the inflation rate down to the 2% target, we may see the prices of products sold in the market to sell will grow at the lower rate gradually. Many policymakers will talk about how they are able to bring the inflation rate down, but like most people, when I go to groceries or any shop, I don't see the price declining, which can be quite confusing. You're not wrong, it just has to do with the definition of inflation, which is a general increase in prices or the rate at which the prices will grow. When I target the inflation rate at 2%, it means they want the prices to continue to grow at 2% every year. In 2022, the growth rate of prices was 9.1%. The lower inflation rate means the price level is not likely to go back to the pre-pandemic level, but to continue increasing at an average rate of 2%. 
Not just the US, but many countries have targeted their inflation rate at 2% despite the growing prices. There have been debates on the rate cut. Some argue that the lowering of the interest rate can increase the inflation rate above the targeted 2%. With the 0.5% rate cut, the Fed hopes to see a rise in employment or a lower unemployment rate. If the policy works as planned, we may see more job offerings, more startups, a rise in wages, a more vibrant job market. In economics, labor and labor productivity are considered the backbone of long-term economic growth. The growth of labor or the growth of labor productivity are considered essential from an economic standpoint. A balancing of maximum employment, low and stable inflation rate, and a suitable interest rate can be quite intricate. One can be high, one can be low, and where do we want to be? Also, many external factors like global events can affect the balance. And lastly, how the rate cut can affect the global economy. When the world was experiencing COVID and high prices, Japan was one of the rare countries that decided to keep its rates low at negative 0.1%. With the high interest rate US offered, investors like Warren Buffett and others took the advantage of rate differential and earned a lot. This investment strategy is known as the carry trade. Investors who borrow in Japan pay a low interest and make investment in the US to earn a high interest rate. The actual transaction of lending and borrowing in different currencies is more complicated than let's say a transaction or done in one single currency, but it was profitable especially for big institutional investors. Also, it was very attractive for people outside the US to change their local currency to US dollar because US dollar investment offer a much higher return than their domestic investment. For example, when compared to countries' government bonds. However, the downside was as the US dollar becomes more desirable, it became more expensive for people to exchange their local currencies to US dollar. As the Fed cut is raised by 50 basis points or by 0.5%, it becomes less profitable for investors to conduct the carry trade because the rate differential shrinks and also there's likely to be less demand for US dollar or fewer reasons for people to exchange their currencies. There's likely to be a more aggressive change in the foreign exchange rate like what we've been seeing with the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair over the past years. The Federal Reserve is projecting more rate cuts in the coming month Depending on how businesses, the global economy, and we as consumers will react on how our spending behavior will change. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Hope it was somewhat informative or useful.